we're going to go back to the shop where Gerald is waiting to give us a tip on preventing misdiagnosis when using a scanner. Sometimes what you see is not what you have. Gerald? From time to time, we have experienced malfunctioning computers on GM vehicles where it reports misleading data to the scanner, leading the technician to think that the problem is in the transmission. Normal commands and electrical functions are observed. One such example is where the scanner retrieved a component slip code P1870. The data stream in the scanner would show that lockup was commanded and TCC duty cycle went toward 100%. Yet instead of seeing the RPM slip go to zero, it would stay high, confirming the 1870 slip code. A mechanically failed solenoid, a stuck or worn valve or valve bore in the valve body, or perhaps even a bad converter or pump would be the logical conclusion to the problem. But what really happened is that the computer malfunctions in such a way that it does not operate a TCC solenoid correctly, which causes the slip. We've had this problem occur with EPC, TCC solenoids, and shift solenoids alike, where the computer indicates that it is making the solenoid command correctly when it is not. The best way to verify this is with a handy dandy portable lie detector otherwise known as a voltmeter on the appropriate solenoid wire to see if the computer is really making the command. Or you could use a transmission analyzer to monitor the computer commands. The meter won't lie. Another misleading problem that happens occasionally is resistance problems that cause voltage drops in the solenoid circuits. These voltage drops are enough to make the solenoid not function properly and yet not trigger a code. Let me show you what I mean. I have set up here one of our custom made electrical simulation boxes which we use in our training classes here at ATSG. This area of the box simulates the activity of a typical on off solenoid, ground side switched. With a voltmeter we can see that the solenoid is being commanded on by observing ground at the solenoid. Now let's say that the wire from the computer to the solenoid is compromised in some way, like a pass-through connector and the firewall is corroded, or there is a resistance in the circuit. Look at the difference in the voltage now. This loss of voltage can be enough to insufficiently operate the solenoid to cause a malfunction of the transmission and not set an electrical code for the solenoid. Instead, it produces a performance code or gear ratio code misleading the technician towards a mechanical or a hydraulic problem. Fortunately, these misleading problems do not occur frequently. Unfortunately, they do occur. The point here is to be aware that on occasions, what you see with the scanner may not always be true. Sometimes you may have to verify that the computer is or is not doing what it tells the scanner it's doing. And other times, solenoid circuits will need to be investigated from the transmission to the computer.